I'm Todd Peenstra. I'm Steve Gooderman, and this is Appraisal Roadshow. Welcome to Appraisal Roadshow. I'm Steve Guterman. I'm Todd Peenstra. Looks like we've got a kind of a nice collection of goods here today to take a look at, Todd. Why don't we get started? You go first, Steve. Let's all right, all right. Well, since it's right after Christmas, let's start with an engagement ring. What is your name? Uh, my name is Jamie. And Jamie, what did you bring today? That is my um, engagement ring. Your engagement and ring. And it is set in platinum. It's about two carats, and um, it's over or about 100 years old. Well, there's the nothing left for me to do here. She knows <laughs> everything about it, so that's fantastic. That's information and, I know that, about it, but... That is great. Well, Steve, well, I think the most important <laughs> thing is, is she still currently engaged? Like, is this guy on the hook for this? Um, he is... Uh, seeking a separation, divorce. So, Aha. no. See, we okay. need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to ask that one extra question. Yeah, right. In any case, what we have here is correct. This yeah. is, it's an old mine cut uh, diamond ring. Okay. The stone itself dates back to the 1870s. It is indeed approximately two carats. Uh, an old mine cut was, they, they, they call them old mine cuts because they originally were cut as they mined them, they cut them outside of the mines. Um, the, the, the way you can tell is if you look straight in the middle of this, it looks like there's a hole in the bottom. There is no hole. What it is, is the culet was actually cut flat as opposed to to a point. And they just lack the technology. Right, the hole the is in their engagement. It's See, not in that, the ring. That seems to be the, the problem. The platinum ring, I'm going to say, is actually from a different time period. The platinum ring itself is actually in the early 1900s. So, let's see, we have a approximate two carat old minor cut stone. If you were trying to sell it, is you trying to find a sale value on it? I would be interested in knowing. Okay, the sale value of this is approximately $6,000. If I was appraising it for an insurance value, I would put the insurance value at about twice that. Okay. Very cool piece, thank you very much. Steve, do you mind if I ask a quick question on that ring? Do you, can you look at that and tell the, how much of that value is the color and the clarity of the stone. Because you talked about the size and the one, age. One, yes, it's, it's a combination of all of that, Todd. The um, color, if you look at it close, most of the stones from the, from certainly the 1870s, 1880s, you can notice that there's a little yellow in the stone. And that is absolutely, totally common. Inside the stone, though, shockingly, it is a fantastic stone. There are very few imperfections. After that, it's the size, and that is it, and it's a terrific ring. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, so, Steve. Sure. All right, um, so what I'm gonna look at here, at the front of the table, we have some old 19th century silhouettes. Who brought these? Who brought the silhouettes? My name is Tina. Tina, and are you from the area? Are you from Maryland? Uh, originally from Pennsylvania, but lived here a long time. <laughs> Well, wel welcome here to the Peg Studio. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about your silhouettes. Let me hold one up and tell me a little bit about where these came from. Are they family pieces? Where you got them? What you know about them? These are all family pieces. Uh, I believe these are great great grandparents. So these are silhouettes of actual people in your family? Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. Okay, so the first one we have here is by, if I remember, it's August Ed Edward. Yes. August Edward, who was French. He was, a, he, was a, he was a French artist, a silhouette artist, who practiced in the 19th century, in the 1800s. He was very famous. He was born in France, and I believe he really went over to London and, and, and sold silhouettes in London. Um, so to talk about silhouettes for a second, these were basically what, what the name implies. They would, they would basically take the silhouette of a family member or someone famous, do a cut of it in one color of paper, then superimpose it over another. And there were people that were very good at it, and they were well known for it. Edward was one of those. 
So um, what did you want to know? Did you want to know, because really there's two values to everything. There's wholesale and retail. There's what you could sell it for, and Steve sort of talked about this with the ring. There's what you could sell it for, and then there's what you would insure it for. In other words, what's the retail in a store? Which this, number would you This would be for? the insurance value. Right, because you don't want to sell no. these. No. I wouldn't think so, especially because they're family members. So if I saw this in a store, I would expect this to bring around $1,250 to $1,500 if it was selling in a store. Now that's because it's by that artist. Uh, a normal silhouette, just to give you an idea, if this was a normal run-of-the-mill silhouette that we, that we see in an everyday market, it'd be more in the three to $500 range. Um, now the second silhouette that I, that I notice here is also, is this also a family member? Yes, I believe so. Who is this? I believe that's my great-grandfather. Okay, and obviously he hunted. He hunted and he... Or he liked to shoot people, he, one of the two. <laughs> um, I believe that's the gun that he designed. Wow. Um, this was your great-grandfather? There were... Uh, yes, my great-grandfather and... Um, there were four guns made and one's at the Smithsonian. Wow. And, and I believe this is that gun. Okay, and this silhouette, if I got it right, this is by William Brown. Right. All right who is an American, a Northeastern uh, from Massachusetts, an American artist, much like Edward, who did silhouettes. So we've got two things going on here. We've got a silhouette by a famous artist, and then we also have, it's by a person who's famous for making guns. So that adds a layer of value to it because of who's in it. So this one I would value it slightly higher because we have that added layer that it's a more famous person in the picture. And also it's American. Because think of it like this, American artists are gonna sell better in America. English and European artists are gonna sell better in Europe. So this one would sell for about, I'd say $1,900 to $2,000. Thank you, thank you very much. Steve, my turn? Yes, sir. Great, okay. Um, let's move on to, we're gonna do something that's some fun. Money, everybody seems to like money. <laughs> Who's, whose was this? And what is your name? Pardon? Donna. Hi, Donna. Okay, Donna brought in uh, actually a couple of bags of, of uh, silver coins and I pulled out a few for the, for the purposes for everybody to take a look at. The first one is a one dollar, silver dollar, and it is from, 19, from 1776 to 1976. And this here is worth one dollar, spending money. <laughs> okay. What we're looking for are coins, silver coins, 1964. That's the magic date. 1964 and older, now you have 90% silver. So since silver's trading at $19 and change per ounce, that has some, a, a um, silver $1 coin would be anywhere between $19 and $25 a coin, just depending on the silver. If it had a magic date on it, it could be $1,500. Let's take a look at, now here we have a 1957 half dollar. Okay, this half dollar is indeed 90% silver. So, we have this dollar that's worth one dollar, and this half dollar, which is worth eight bucks. Wow. That's pretty good. Then we have a dime from 1947, and this one is worth one dollar and sixty cents. So we certainly don't want to put it into the machine yeah. as a dime. Last was your Kennedy, 1964. It also, 1964, magic date, silver, eight dollars. Now, with, with Kennedy halves, 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69 happen to be 40 percent silver. So they would be worth approximately $2.80 a piece. Very neat. Thank you. Yeah, and to our audience out there, we want to say, Steve, because we run into this a lot, we urge people to be really careful where they go to sell their coins because there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there that are taking advantage of the fact that gold and silver are high, right? Yeah, you would want, 
you ha have a professional come in and certainly evaluate your collection uh, the, if you were ever planning on selling yeah definitely yeah check it out first all right so uh now we're going to go we have a collection of these beautiful hat pins um who brought those my name is ruth hi ruth where hi. are you from i live in crownsville presently but i'm from massachusetts oh so you're a transplant how long have you lived mm -hmm. in crownsville um about 14 years now did you start your collection early or have you just been doing this lately? about 35 years ago i was uh, working in an antique shop and a man came in uh, it was an old carriage house with an old board for the counter and stuck a hat pin in it and said i found this in the attic and will you buy it and so i didn't know anything about hat pins i knew what they were all you knew is a strange man was brandishing a sharp object <laughs> yeah, so you were you going to buy it no matter uh -huh. what right yeah so it, i didn't know and it had a big stone in it it was cracked and so i said i'll give you ten dollars i wanted him to leave really <laughs> <laughs> so he took the ten dollars and then in the spring i did a show in potomac and I had the hat pin in a, in a case, and a, a man and woman came up and bought it, and I had $35 on it. And so uh, I wanted to sell it, so I said, you can have it for 30 And they took it and bought it, and when they walked away, I felt sad. And so after that, I just got interested in hat pins. Now you know I'm, why she felt sad, Steve, she only made a $20 profit. She was like, right. well, I could have made more than yeah. that. I, I know why you <laughs> felt sad. You were missing your hat pins. Uh -huh. But I now I it. have about 150, mm -hmm. all sizes and all descriptions. And this I is fantastic. I mean, look at this. We have type. Right. We have metal ones. We have, we have these, which are like souvenirs from different parts of the country. Um, we have these, which, which some have stones in them. This one, um, this one actually has a basketball. Steve, you know how you can tell this is a women's basketball as opposed to a men's basketball? No, how can you tell? Women's basketballs are always smaller. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, you guys are contractually obligated Boo. to laugh at these jokes. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> now here we have, what I like about this is not so much the hat pins, which are beautiful, but look at the holder. The holder is metal, but you can see all the way through it, as opposed to this is more typical of what you'll see with a hat pin holder these solid sort of ceramic holders. This one is, is metal and, and see-through. And then these are actually pairs, aren't they? These are pairs of hat pins. They have moonstones. Uh, some of them are just enameled. They do it from both sides. Well, let's talk just in general terms. Hat pins were really popular more in the 19th and the early 20th century. Today, they're more of a, a collectible item. They're not as fashionable as they were. Um, just to talk on general terms about hat pins, and I'm not going to get into any specifics with these. Really nice hat pins, well, specifically say one like this, which has some hand-set rhinestones. It has what, what appears to be jade in the top of it. You know, this would be more at the top end, which you would see these sell in a store for anywhere from 40 to $80, you know, somewhere in that range. And at the lower end, you're going to see them sell at more in the five to twenty dollar range of what you were talking about earlier so depending on the hat pins you're going to see them you know somewhere again between five and a hundred dollars per piece the holders like these ceramic holders right here those generally if you wanted to sell them you could sell those for about five to twenty dollars a piece wholesale and retail if these are in a store these are again twenty five to fifty to seventy five dollar items in a store depending on how pretty they are, how old they are, who made them, because you might have a holder like this that's generic with no maker, well, that's a $25 or a $30 holder. If you have the same holder that's decorated with more colors and it's Limoges, that's going to be more like $100 because we know the maker. That's a wonderful collection. Thank you so much for bringing it. Well, that is pretty neat. Next, I have a pin. Whose pin? What can you tell us about the pin? I, I don't know anything about the pin. I assume it was my grandmother's. You assumed it was your grandmother's? 
Or it is your grandma. It was uh, your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I, I don't know. I how inherited to, it. My, you stumped me. I'm not sure where to go with that. <laughs> it either, okay. All right, let's assume for the argument's sake, it was your grandmother's mm -hmm. at one point. Had a chance to take a look at this. The um, pin itself is actually put together. There's, uh, there's two different eras that they've put together. The base on it, it was put together sometime in the, from 1920 on. The original piece is actually platinum, and it has an old miner's cut that we had talked about earlier with the engagement. X. We'll call that the was been <laughs> ring, right? Okay. And we have. And Wait, what was that? Scene? The was the was been, ring? right? It's not the husband, kind of the was been, right? So we need to get it. We, we need to like uh, like uh, to copyright that for a T-shirt. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So we have platinum. And these two blue stones, the reason that it, it actually authenticates it is that these two blue stones that originally we had talked about that you thought were sapphires, they're not. They're actually just cut crystal. And that actually authenticates the piece because back in the 1800s, they lacked the technology to cut them perfectly. So that actually legitimized the piece. I tested the metal, we have platinum, we have 14 carats, so I'm sure about that. The old miner cut in the center. Because it has been put together, it takes away from the value a little bit. If you were trying to sell it, you'd probably have a piece that's worth in the three to $400 range. If you were trying to insure it, it would probably be insured for about $1,000. Okay, all right. Very nice. Okay, who brought this bisque piece and this print. Ah, hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. What's your name? Joan, now from Joan. Brooklyn, Maryland. You live in Maryland? Yes, uh-huh. What oh. town do you live in? I live in uh, Baltimore City in Brooklyn. Okay, so not too far from here at the Peg Studio, about 20 or 30 minutes, I'm guessing. That's without true, traffic. <laughs> that's true. Um, tell us a little bit about this piece. Okay, that was my grandmother's. I have three pieces all together, and they're all different sizes and different uh, look to them. You see, Steve, she knows it's her grandmother's. <laughs> There's no guessing there. And it was in her, uh, she had a grandfather clock, and then underneath was a glass cabinet, and they were in the glass, cla excuse me, the glass cabinet underneath the grandfather's clock. And uh, I did a little research on it, and I think it's an Italian compote vase. It don't have no markings, and for what I could find online, that if it didn't have any markings, it might be before the 16th century. Okay, now um, tell me again how many pieces we have in the set. I have three. So you have the pair of these. No, they're all different. They're all, all three different. are different. But it's a set. There are no sets. So oh, it's so it's just three pieces. Three they pieces. don't go together. It's Absolutely. Some are pieces. bigger and, uh, and more elaborate. I understand. I understand now. I thought you were talking about a set. Well, you know, this is probably decorative in its day, but I actually have a use for this since we're doing this on public TV and we're not getting paid. If you guys have any loose change that you'd like to put in this, <laughs> why are y'all laughing? No, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We, we don't want your money, do we, Steve? No. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, okay. Actually, this is not from the 16th century, uh, unfortunately. 16th century would be 400 years old. That would be quite a feat. This is much newer than that. So even though it's tricky, because you're right, things that would not be marked from the 16th century, I would totally agree with that. But we can tell based on the patina, I can, my eye is trained, uh, that this is much newer than that. This is 20th century. I would be surprised if it's not much older than about 1950, 1940. Uh, that's what it appears to be, but it's certainly 20th century. It's bisque, which is a soft paste porcelain. Uh, soft paste porcelain. Uh, in a nutshell, it's just a little bit cheaper to make than a hard paste porcelain, which is fine china. Think about the china that you eat off of, a fine china, that's hard paste porcelain. This is a little bit cheaper, um, and, but it's beautiful. It's got beautiful colors. We've got the, the flowers on there. Now, unfortunately, even though this is 20th century, we, the, the market views it as Victorian because it's sort of a Victorian mold. And Victorian things right now aren't selling real well on the market. So if I saw this in a store, uh, this would be marked in a store probably $25 to $40 would be your retail. The wholesale on this would only be $5 or $10 or $15, unfortunately. So I would say just keep it and enjoy it, use it, uh, because you're not going to get that much for it currently. And listen, 
I say this, one of the reasons we do this show, folks, is that, you know, you see other TV shows out there and they have really valuable million dollar paintings. What Steve and I want to do with our show is to help you guys and people that are watching with everyday items. Because these are the things that you guys deal with on a daily basis. Someone's mom or dad dies, they're settling in a state. Uh, so you're moving into a retirement home or you're downsizing, you've got two homes, you're moving into one home. Uh, and you're trying to get rid of this stuff and you want to find out what it's worth. These are the things that most people have out there. This is what we want to help you with. We want to help you figure that out. Um, now you also brought this print, did you not? Yes, I did. Now this is a print, is it Utrillo? Uh, yes, it was, but that wasn't his original name. It was born Maurice Valdon in Paris, France in 1883. I love it when I get lectured to, Steve, by the people that bring yeah. things. Hey, hey, have I gotten anything else right, ma'am, while I was doing this? Oh, you're doing fine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, it, it, this is a Utrillo. Now, the thing about this is it is a print. It is not an original Utrillo. An original would be an oil on canvas, a pen and ink. In other words, his hand actually drew this. That would be an original work of art. If this was an original Utrillo, we would be talking about five or six figures. Because this is a print and it's not signed, it's much more common. Uh, so this is a piece that if you saw it in a store, this is about maybe a $30 to a $50 item in a store. It depends on the framing. The framing is going to affect the value a little bit. Again, wholesale, what could you sell it for? Very minimally, I'd say five to $25 is what you could probably get forward on the market today. Now, in the right-hand corner down there, he has his signature, but is that hand printed? It's part of the print. It's okay. not an original signature. If it had his original signature on there, it would be worth more. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Todd, I think we've seen a, some, some pretty neat pieces today. I yes. Think we're going to have to wrap it up for today, though. Shoot, I was hoping that Joan could correct me a little bit more before we <laughs> left. And I was going to try to find out the ancestry of that pet. <laughs> <laughs> that grandmother. It might be my grandmother's. Right. Maybe I just picked it up at my neighbor's when I was at the Christmas party. I'm not sure. It's all the same. <laughs> if you're interested in any more information, all you have to do is hit appraisalroadshow.com to get some more information. That's right. What we'll answer is what you have, what it's worth, and what is a gluten? A gluten? <laughs> no, we're not going to answer that. We'll answer the first two. There you go. In any case, thank you so much for coming. Thank we you. had a great time. Thanks again. <laughs>